Like other state legislatures, Nebraska's unicameral is a body of officials who are elected to represent the people of the state, make new laws, and change old ones. But unlike the other 49 state legislatures, Nebraska uses a unicameral system. While all of the other state legislatures use the traditional bicameral system, made up of both a House and a Senate, Nebraska only has a Senate, which consists of 49 elected officials who each represent about 35,000 people. The unicameral is also the only nonpartisan legislature in the country, meaning that when elections for the legislature are held, the candidates don't have party labels by their names, and once they're elected, they aren't controlled by political parties. The unicameral was brought to Nebraska through the efforts of one of Nebraska's U.S. Senators, George W. Norris. Norris thought that the two-house system was, quote, outdated, inefficient, and unnecessary. In order to convert Nebraska's bicameral system into a unicameral, Norris campaigned for a ballot initiative in 1934 that allowed the citizens of the state to decide on whether or not they should change the state legislature's system. It is said that Norris wore out two sets of tires while campaigning across the state. Norris encountered opposition, and not everyone in the state was on board with his vision for creating the nation's first unicameral. While the idea wasn't universally accepted, the initiative passed by almost 93,000 votes. Norris's vision for Nebraska's state legislature became a reality when the body officially began operating as a unicameral in 1937. The size of the legislature was changed from 133 to 43, a 70% reduction. The body also passed more bills into law and cost the state almost $100,000 less. In the 1960s, there was a push by other states to adopt a unicameral system after seeing its success in Nebraska, but no other states went on to adopt the system. To learn more about how the legislature functions, I interviewed Amy Johnson, the public information officer at the Unicameral. We really rely heavily on uh, heavily engaged citizenry to uh, bring their ideas to the county capitol and have them vote on the legislation. Uh, and so we have a function as a second house, uh, the way that a Senate and a House representatives would work in any other state. So there's more uh, reliance on voters and reliance on transparency and uh, the media even in some regards to to offer some balance and to slow down the process so that we can function with a smaller body of legislators but still uh, prevent bad legislation from just uh, rushing through. One of the big differences in a one body legislature, you don't have what's called a conference committee. So you don't have two different bodies bringing similar concepts and legislation and then having to try and merge those ideas and try to reconcile those. We just have the, the one body bringing forth legislation. So in that regard, it's, it's a much more efficient process than a bicameral system. Nebraska's unicameral passes a higher percentage of bills that are introduced into law than the national average. In 2016, state legislatures across the country passed an average of 24% of introduced bills, while Nebraska passed 38%. This was a high enough percentage to rank in the top 10 for the year. I asked Johnson if she thought Nebraska would ever switch back to a bicameral system, or if she thought more states would join Nebraska in having a unicameral system. I think the unicameral is probably here to stay. Uh, from a practical well, uh, perspective, it would take a constitutional amendment to go back to a bicameral, and I think asking the voters to double the size of their state legislature would be a pretty hard sell politically. Uh, I feel like it's it's served us well since 1937. There are people who will always fight issues or or disagree with the system, but it's, it's served us well this long. But every few years we have a delegation from some random state that will come here and observe us and do some research into to implementing a, a unicameral. The interesting thing there though is in almost every state it would require legislators to essentially vote themselves out of a job. That's not an easy sell. I think a lot of states would do well to adopt one, but I think there are a lot of things that help make a unicameral successful and I don't know that it would necessarily function in states with really large populations. I mean, we're, we're a pretty small state, so I think it works. I don't know how that would work in the California or Texas or New York, um, but I, I think it's a great system and I think it would work well in other states.